Welcome fellow Wasteland Survivors, I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in because this Tips and Tricks video series is brought to us by our good friend Choppy. He had asked if I could create a video showing in detail how I build round structures in my settlements. Now there is no possible way I could ever show all the techniques and things I've learned in just one video. And since I really think it's very important to understand a lot of the tricks I've discovered over the years, I think we need to start off with the very basics. It's one thing to see how it's done, it's another to understand how it's done. So, for part one, we're going to travel back in time and see some of my very first settlement builds where I had first learned and discovered some of these tips and tricks that I still use to this day. And over the next few videos we'll see how I was able to modify them, adjust them, and how I use them to create some of the newest builds that we all have come to enjoy. Now the first two settlements that we're looking at here were actually created way before any DLCs came out. At this particular time I didn't know about the settlement size glitch, the rug glitch, I didn't even know about group select. And of course this is way before mods came out. So these settlements that we're seeing were actually created with nothing but the original content that was brought to us when we first got Fallout 4. But since then we've got a lot of new content and a lot of new objects to build with. Because I understood the basics of how to build curved structures, these new objects that we can build with make it much easier to build these curved structures. For example, this building here at this settlement. It is a six-sided octagon shaped building at the top of a tower. Even though it's six walls instead of four, it does have a solid floor and a solid ceiling. And we'll see how we do that throughout this series as well. Even though we've got these new objects, we can still use our original vanilla objects with them to help give us a junky look. And they can really make your settlement very impressive. Just like this one here at this Raider settlement. We've got an octagon shaped tower or, or build on the top of this tower and it really makes this settlement stand out. Now the final videos in this series will be more advanced and here is another one at this settlement. Well actually it's a, another Raider settlement but we've used the tips and tricks that we're going to see in this series to build this structure. It's for the vendors and because we're using the cycling lights it gives it a really neat lighting effect as well. And then we'll finish off our series with our most recent build, the USS Enterprise. So let's quit messing around and get started. Okay, now I've chosen Sanctuary for today's demonstration. Uh, we're going to use one of these concrete pads that's left behind after you scrap one of the destroyed houses that's here. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is place down five vanilla floorboards. I like to use these floorboards because they have different colored floorboards on them. Now we're going to place these five floors down in a plus or a cross pattern. Also we're going to add in an extra floor on the side so that we can stand on it. Now one thing that you'll want to make sure that you always do is these three floors, this one I'm standing on and these two in front of it are always running in the same direction. These side floors it does not matter what direction they're facing or running. The only reason that they're there is to keep the next floor that we're going to place on top from snapping into that area 
see how I can't get it up here it keeps snapping or from even turning green sometimes uh, it might not snap but it would just stay red so we're gonna place another floor on top and we're gonna line it up to this corner right here in front of us we're also gonna use four floors <coughs> as the curve of our wall. Now you could actually use any floorboard that you would like to create your curve. We could do one, we could do two, three, we could do all the way across if we wanted to. There are 14 floor boards on a floor. So this is the middle. If we count seven to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or we count the other direction, and I think I got that wrong, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there we go, and we go seven the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the reason that we're running our floorboards in the same direction and the same color of floorboard on the same side for instance we've got the red on the right and the white floorboards is on the left and that's because the floorboards are not the same width <clears throat> even though there's the same amount of floorboards right and left seven and seven make fourteen the floorboards are not the same width you can see the first ones different the second ones up oh, pretty close the third one not too bad but here look the fourth ones way off the fifth one way off, sixth one, so on across. And that's why we always keep the floorboards running the same direction and the same color of floorboards on the same side. And it doesn't matter if you want to use the red or the white side. Just always keep them going in the same direction. Now for today's demonstration we're going to go with four floorboards wide. Uh, our angle. So we'll move that over, we'll line this corner up, and then we'll make sure that we are oh, pretty close, right in the middle of the fourth and fifth floor where they're jointed together. There's a little bit of a space there, and we'll try to put this corner right in the middle of it. And that looks pretty close. Now the next thing that we'll want to do is make sure our corners are all matching up. If this corner is a little too far away or too close to the next floor, when we put our floors, our walls up, there may be a gap or it may be penetrating into the other wall and give you a snapping issue. Okay, now that we've got our second floor down, we're going to take the pre-existing floors that we've already made the plus or the cross with and we're going to use them to make another plus or cross on the floor we just put down. And we'll just move these guys real quick. Once again, this is the angle that we're going. So this floor we're standing on and the two floors in front of it always have to be going in the same direction. Once again, the sideboards, it doesn't make any difference what direction they're running. Also, we'll move our board up that we're standing on. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is lay another floor down and line it up the best that we can. And since this is just a demonstration, I'll try not to spend a whole lot of time aligning these corners up. But that ought to be pretty close. Yeah, that looks good. And I think we're okay. We're just a little bit far away from this side and a little bit this way. It's always good, if you notice I was on this side, it's because looking down I can move the floor straight. If I move to this side, I can once again move the floor straight. And it does help with, you know, trying to move, like if we grabbed it right here and was trying to move like this, you know how hard it is to do that, guys and gals. So it's easier to just change your positions on the floor to move them if you need to. And once again, we'll check. Okay, we are off a little bit. So we'll grab it right here and we'll just bump it a little. I think that ought to be good. 
Okay, good enough. Okay, now that we've got three floors up, this is what we have to do. I will take and move our floors back into the next position. Or, you know what, actually, let's just take them out of the way so that way it's not confusing how this looks. Okay, we've got three floors up. The next thing that we'll want to do is place some of these quarter floors out and mark these boards. Now it doesn't matter if you put the marker here or here, but you'll want to put them on the outside for sure. So let's go ahead and mark one board there. We'll mark the next floor in the same spot and the next floor. Okay, now what we're going to want to do is take out this floor and this floor. We're going to leave the very first floor that we made where it was at. But the third floor, we're going to actually highlight this marker and let it drop to the ground. Now we can go ahead and put our floors back in. And let's go ahead, let's see, let's put this one in. Uh, build order for doing this is important. But because of the way we're building right now, build order doesn't matter. So we could have actually put this floor in first, then this floor. It just might have been harder to snap in because of it going underneath that middle floor. Okay, now that we have our first three floors up, we can go ahead and take our markers out. Now, let's go ahead and build a couple of more floors. And we'll do it three more times. So, first one here, here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's spin these. That way you guys know which one that we're working on. And we'll spin this one too. Uh, once again, let's put another floor on the side so we don't fall off while we're doing this. And let's align up. We're going to actually build two more floors. So let's see if I can do this where I can see the end four floors and our corner at the same time. Uh, you know, Fallout 4 does have some great graphics, but depth perception is not really all that great. Um, but, you know, anything you can do to see better is definitely going to help. Okay, I think we got it. We just need to move it this way a little bit. And I think we're good. All right, now for this... <coughs> Excuse me, the next floor, we'll just take our pre-existing floors out that we use to make the plus and create another plus or cross with it. And we'll put these side ones on and this one that we're standing on. Okay, let's once again see if we can just line this up. Okay, that corner's off pretty decent. So is our four boards. Let's move it over. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're still off a little bit. I think I moved it too far. Let's try it again. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Now let's check our corners. Okay, it looks like we're a little bit too close into this floor. If you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the floor is highlighted underneath of the floor we just put on. Plus, it looks like this floor could actually come this way just a little bit. So let's adjust it. Um, when it turns red like that, that's because you're looking down at it too much. If you notice, see how it's red? We're looking down. So to keep it from turning red, we got to go back a little bit, and then it'll turn green. Um, let's move it this way a little bit now, and check it. Okay, it still looks like we need to go this way a little bit. All right, and as you guys can see, you really need to take, you know, some pretty decent time and make sure... <clears throat> that you're getting it as close as you can. It will save you a lot of problems at the end. And it could even, you know, save you a lot of snapping issues as well. 
All right, now since this is the last floor that we're putting in, let's go ahead and take all these other floors out that we were using for um, uh, not really markers, but a base. Once again, we'll go back in. We will get some markers. We'll place them on in the same way. We'll take this floor out. We'll take this floor out, and then we'll go ahead and drop this one back to the ground. Any time that you have an object floating in the air, if you highlight it, and it's not too far in the air, it'll automatically drop straight down to the ground. And if you don't move, it'll be exactly on the ground where it was in the air. And that's why we're doing that. Okay, now let's go ahead and put our floors back in. And we'll continue to keep rolling them the same direction. All right, there you go. And now you can see build order didn't really bother us there. The reason is, is because nothing is going into the other object. It's only underneath of it. All right, now this is the beginning concept of building circular. We've created a stair step up and down pattern around this, uh, uh, this little concrete slab that we're on. Now, the, because when I started learning this, uh, we didn't have DLCs, I'm going to actually show you guys the way that I built these walls without the extra items we've got from DLCs. And I'm just going to use these upper shack ladders to do it. And we'll snap them all on and make sure... <coughs> you'll want to make sure that they are snapped to the floors correctly. If one of these is snapped up like that and you delete out a floor, you will have to go all the way back and put that floor back in because we don't have markers for it. And the marker would be from the front. It's extremely hard to mark the back side of these. You can do it, but it's hard to get these to go in there. So it's always easier to marker the front of these walls than it is the back. Now, also, some of the beginning walls that I used to use for doing this was these concrete blocks. And we'll put the first one in. And you can see how that's looking already. Now, if we try to put the second one in, it will go in there. And the reason is, is because it is above the first concrete block that we tried to, or that we put in. But the third one will not go in, and no matter what you do, it will never, ever snap in there. The reason is, is build order. So what we have to do is go every other floor, uh, floor that's lower than the... Uh, the floors that are up above that. Now we can snap the extra floors in and because of build order we now have our very first wall that's curved. Now I really like the way these concrete blocks look. They are pretty cool but some people aren't into them and you know that's okay because actually we can use other walls as well. We don't have to use those kind of walls. So, let's snap up some vanilla walls, first of all. And there you go. See, I missed the snap point. So you'll want to always make sure that you're snapping to the correct floor and not to a different spot. <clears throat> if you're building a large build and you make one mistake, you could have to go back and redo a big section of it again because you took a part out that's not markered. But we can already see that the vanilla walls are looking pretty good. We can also look at them from out here on this side. Yeah, that looks awesome. And we're still building in a curve. Now, let's go ahead and pull these walls out. And let's try something that we got from a DLC, Wasteland Workshop. How about the concrete walls? Let's snap a few of them up here. See how they look. OK. 
Okay, looking good. Oh, we didn't get the snap point on that wall. Let's make sure and get it right. And you always check. Make sure that they're snapped in the right place. And they are. And that looks really, really good. Now, there is going to be a gap a little bit on the front. And we could actually adjust these where these set inside of one another because one of the walls is above the other wall. But if we were building flat, we wouldn't be able to do that. But there are some tricks that we can do to cover them up. They actually can look pretty cool in a build, depending on what you're building. But we can actually use other things to cover those up. And I'll just show an example real quick. Now these we could place in on an angle and it would give us a little bit of a different architectural look. And let's see if we can just get one to turn green. We're not going to put one in because it's not, this video is not about that. <clears throat> but just imagine how that would look if that was kind of setting in there Oh, maybe about right there or something. You'd have a little peak sticking out, and that would look pretty sweet. Okay, now let's try another wall and see what we get with that. This time, let's use some barn walls. Um, you know what? We did this uh, vanilla walls that are kind of that metal look. Let's try the red ones this time. And as you guys can see, it really doesn't matter what type of wall we want to snap to it, it's going to snap there. Um, except for this one. It's wanting to give us a hard time. Okay, let's set it down, get a little closer, and there we go. Oh, we've got to take a concrete wall out. Okay, why are you giving me a hard time? It's wanting to snap to its original. Oh, there it was. There it goes. And that one just dropped right in. No problem. Once again, we've got another pretty cool look. And out here looks good as well. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think we got a pretty good look at the very beginning basics of building a curved structure. In the next video, we're going to take the same tips and tricks that we saw in this video and build a curved staircase. So, I hope I see you guys for that one. Alright everybody, thank you very much for stopping in, hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.